Good morning. I want to wish you all a happy Father's Day from me. Thank you. Um, today I'm going to talk about what it takes to be a strong father. Be strong, be a strong father. Um, you know, the great thing is, it doesn't matter what kind of father you had, you can still be a great, strong father. So, we may have to work more if we don't have, haven't had that great example, but I'm here to help you do that today. <clears throat> and although I'm talking about fathers this morning, the rest of you men and boys stick with me because I'm going to, not going to leave you out. This is for you too. We are all aware that there are all kinds of fathers. Just like fingerprints and snowflakes, no two fathers are alike. And not one of us are perfect. Just ask your kids or your kids' grandparents. <laughs> and let that sink in. Your kids' grandparents, you know, they have, they have opinions about. Anyway, um, let's talk about being a father. Fathering a child doesn't make you a father any more than cutting a piece of wood makes you a carpenter or putting air in a tire makes you a mechanic. Being a father means you are invested in raising that child. It doesn't mean that you know what you're doing, but it requires that you be engaged in raising that child. It isn't a, mo a momentary commitment, but a long-term commitment. You are learning as you go, and hopefully you have good examples or at least good help along the way. Yes, especially with that first child, you will make many, many mistakes. I did that. Like I said, no earthly father is going to do everything right. There's an anonymous quote that says, children are great imitators, so give them, give them something great to imitate. Yeah, I thought that was really good. So what happens when you mess up? This is something I'm very familiar with. When that happens, realize that you have a teachable moment. How you react will have just as much of an impact as what you say, so be cautious. Be man enough to say to your child that you messed up and that you are sorry. That isn't something your child, that is something your child will carry with them and they will respect you for it. Remember that each day is a new day and a new opportunity to love and teach that child. Let me say here in my experience that all fathers I have talked to about raising their kids are focused on preparing their child for adulthood with the tools and maturity to make it on their own when the time comes. One of the scariest things I can think of as a dad is watching your child go out in, on their own and feeling that you hadn't prepared them for it. Proverbs 22.6 says, raise up a child in the way he should go even when he is old, he will not depart from it. And there's another quote from Bob Talbot. Teaching, a kids, teaching kids to count is fine, but teaching them what counts is best. Deuteronomy 4, 9 and 10 says in the Amplified Version, only pay attention and watch yourselves closely so that you do not Forget the things which your eyes have seen, and they do not depart from your heart all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your grandchildren, impressing these things on their mind and penetrating their heart with these truths. Especially the day you stood before the Lord your God at Horeb, Mount Sinai, when the Lord said to me, Assemble all the people to me, and I will let them hear my words, so they may learn to fear me with awe filled reverence and profound respect all the days they live on the land and so that they may teach their children. <clears throat> and let me interject here that you don't have to have a child to be a father to a child. You can be a father figure to a child who doesn't have a father or at least be a good example to those children around you. You can still make a difference in a child's life by your involvement. I want to encourage you to think about that. 
So what does a strong father look like? I would say a strong father is a man who invested in all the areas of his child's life. A strong father is caring, fun, of good character, fair, understanding, encouraging, and a father who teaches right from wrong. A father who listens, who shares his knowledge, a father who loves their mother, but most of all, a strong, follow, a strong father needs to follow Jesus and to teach his kids to follow Jesus by his example. Here are some great quotes from uh, BibleReasons.com. Our greatest concern for our children should be that they grow to love God above all. Your greatest contribution to the kingdom of God may not be something you do, but someone you raise. One day they will walk in your shoes. Make sure they are pointed in the right direction. Children, learn more from what you are than from what you teach. <clears throat> Where do we look for help? First, look to God's word. Also, you can look to other fathers that you would like to emulate and ask for advice. Sometimes men have a hard time asking for advice, right? It takes humility. There are endless Christian re resources on parenting. Don't be so macho that you won't ask for help. Wouldn't you want your child to ask for help when they are lost? What characteristics do we need? You guessed it, we look at our Heavenly Father for our perfect example. Characteristics we should have are those God the Father teaches us by his example. Think about these examples and how you can apply them. God loves his children, cares for his children, provides for his children, wants the best for his children, comforts his children, understands his children, he guides his children, disciplines his children, yeah. and, and is ever present with his children. God gives hope to his children, picks up his children when they fall, carries his children, rewards his children, and feeds his children. Our perfect Heavenly Father teaches his children, has compassion, wants the best, gives strength in hard times, and matures them. Yeah. And sometimes, maybe more often than we know, we can know he smiles, and I'm pretty sure he laughs at his children. <laughs> I could have looked up the scriptures for each of these examples, but I know you know the, all of them are true. Kids can be fun and funny and cute, causing mom and dad to laugh. So kids, don't get mad when your parents laugh at you. Their parents laughed at them, and you will laugh at your kids someday. It's okay. But dads, don't laugh when your child does something foolish or dumb or gets hurt. That is not a good example. A wise father bridles his tongue. Sometimes one of the hardest things for a dad to do is think before he speaks. Can anyone say amen? So men, fathers and boys, if you are a father now, or if, when, if and when you are a father, or if you are a father figure, when you don't know what to do, look to the only perfect example and try to gain those qualities that God gives us to follow, and you will be a strong father, and your children will be amazing, and you will be proud of them. But love them even if they disappoint you and mess up because God still loves us when we do. Go and be strong. Again, happy Father's Day. You fathers are amazing. Oh, that's good. Well, good morning, everybody. I'm so happy that everyone's here this morning. And I'm not up here to do the announcements or take a second offering like many of you might think. Uh, <laughs> but I'm here to share a little bit about Fathers and Father's Day. 
from my perspective and from a biblical perspective. And when I told Leslie that line, she said, how come they're different? (laughs) Well, hopefully they line up today, uh, but I want to share a little bit with you. You know, I'm not used to speaking on Sunday mornings from the pulpit like this, but I think that God has a message for everybody here. I know it's Father's Day, but I think there's something for everybody in the message that I think God has given to us. So, you know, I started thinking about when I was asked to speak this morning, I was thinking and I started becoming curious, like, why am I chosen to speak this morning? What makes me qualified? Well, I guess I do have four awesome children, and I have been a father for almost 17 years. When I wrote that down, I started thinking, I was like, man, 17 years, I'm not that old. And I looked in the mirror and I go, I'm gray, I am that old. (laughs) It's like, huh, time flies. You know, when I was preparing for this message, you know, I was sitting in the car, we were driving somewhere, and I asked my kids, you know, I said, kids, what should I speak about for Father's Day? And the answers that I got were very diverse. I'm going to share to you uh, what, some of what they said, and maybe you can guess on which child said what. <laughs> one of my children, and I'll just say it was one of my daughters, she said, I, you should talk about the joy of having a perfect daughter. <laughs> I see finger points and I think they're correct. One of my children said, Dad, you should talk about hunting. Kim is prophetic this morning. But two for two, let's see if she got the go farther here. One kid said I should talk about working to provide for my family. Haley, I want that one. And one kid said, I should talk about dedication and how that dedication has kept a roof over our heads. So they gave some great answers, but we're not going to talk about perfect children or we're not going to talk about hunting this morning, although I would probably much rather speak about hunting. Um, (laughs) We're going to talk about tools. And if you saw my message title on the, on your, uh, on the bulletin or the, on the marquee outside, my message title is Be a Tool. If you have ever looked at the ads around Father's Day, tools always go on sale this time of year, don't they? You know, in general, guys just love tools. I love tools. I love gadgets. I love all that stuff. I don't even work outside anymore. I I work in an office, but I still like tools. And so I think that working around that, we're going to come up with a message today based around tools. And we're going to start our message uh, on fatherhood, and we're going to look at an account from Moses in the Old Testament. And Moses is one of the greatest fathers in all of history. Moses. He was the father of two biological children, Gershom and Eliezer. But more importantly, Moses is one of the greatest fathers of faith for the Jews and Christians. He's one of the greatest fathers of faith that we have and one of the greatest examples that we have. So I'm sure you guys know about Moses, but I'm going to give you a little bit of a backstory. Moses was born in Egypt. And Moses was born during a time where people were were persecuted. They were slaves at that time, slaves in Egypt. And Moses was supposed to be put to death by Pharaoh's decree. He made a decree that all of the boy male children should be killed. But Moses, something different happened. Moses was was led in a basket down in a river as an infant out of his parents' desperation. God had plans for Moses and intervened. He was ultimately raised as an Egyptian royalty. He was raised as an Egyptian prince in Pharaoh's household. But Moses, and Moses at the, ended up saving all of God's persecuted people, leading them to the promised land. If you have never read Moses' story, I implore you to do it this week. It's an amazing story. And I can't tell you all that happened in Moses' life 
just due to time. But I want to share a story that I think exemplifies the message today. Our story that we're talking about is found in Exodus chapter 4. This account happened when Moses was called by God, actually God. He spoke to Moses face to face, well, face the burning bush. Moses was trepidatious about God's calling. Who could blame him? However, even through all of that, God called Moses to return to Egypt when he was on the run from the law. And we could talk about that, but that's a story for a different day. But he called Moses to return to Egypt and tell Pharaoh to let God's people go. So let's together, let's read our account. Exodus chapter 4, this is verses 1 through 5. Moses answered, What if they do not believe me or listen to me? And they say, The Lord did not appear to you. Then the Lord said to him, What is that in your hand? A staff, he replied. The Lord said, Throw it on the ground. Moses threw it on the ground and it became a snake. And he ran from it. Then the Lord said to him, Reach out your hand and take it by the tail. So Moses reached out, took hold of the snake, and it turned back into the staff in his hand. This, the Lord said the Lord, is so that they may believe that the Lord, the God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has appeared to you. Now many of you know that I hate snakes. I would have ran too. I might have shot that snake. <laughs> but so why are we going to talk about this story on of all the stories that we have in the Bible, all of the examples that we have? Why are we going to talk about this story on Father's Day? And I'm going to get to that in a little bit. But God established how humans would reproduce since day one. Well, maybe six at least, if you're paying attention. But God established parenthood to teach he established it to train and to exemplify God's relationship with us, of him with us. And fatherhood is one of, well, or parenthood, is one of God's greatest tools in God's tool chest. Proverbs chapter 22 and 6, I thought it was funny. Doug used the same scripture, but God said, Start children off on the way they should go, and even when they are old, they will, not, they will not turn from it. All throughout Scripture, we find God pushing biblical parenthood to train and replicate his chosen people and his people. Psalms 127, verses 3 at the beginning of 5 says, Children are a heritage from the Lord, offspring a, a reward from him like arrows in the hands of a warrior are children born in one's youth blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them men and women all men and women are tools that god uses or can't should be tools that god uses to bring about his kingdom here on earth see i was raised by a number of fathers I have, I said fathers, plural on purpose. Not because it's 2023, but because God has placed many men that have helped shape me into who I am today. Some people say I look like my dad. I don't see it. I don't even have a 41 mag. I, I, don't, I, I just can't see it. Uh, but that's my dad. That's my stepdad there. You see, my mom and dad, they divorced right around my eighth birthday. And I remember getting a socket set from my dad that year to go along with our tool theme today. But my mom has always said everyone is an example. Some are examples of what to do and others of what not to do. <laughs> and often, unfortunately, my dad fell in the late, latter part of that conversation. But... Uh, I grew up with a dad, a stepfather, and my grandfather, and later, I have a father-in-law. 
God uses men as tools to help chisel boys into men. And I know that I needed more help than most. And that's why God put extra men in my life. I could have added many, many, many pictures up here, many different people. I could have added pictures of men like Michael and Ellis, and, and I think there's a picture of Ernie up there. But I could have added lots and lots of people up there, and women, not just men, but and women, who have helped chisel me into who I am today. Now, saying all of this, I realize that fatherhood is under attack today. If you don't believe me that fatherhood's under attack, I have some stats I want to share with you. I'm going to put them up here on the screen. Now, I don't know if you can read this or not, so I'm going to go ahead and go through it with you. But there is 18.4 million children, which is one in four, without a biological step or adoptive father at home and there's an effect to this it's not just that they don't have fathers but there is a definite uh, alarming set of facts that go along with this now this, this list is not exhaustive by any means but research shows that when a father is raised in a father absent home they are affected in the following ways now I want you to realize too that this is a secular uh, set of data, and this is on a national average. But children, when they grow up without a father, are four times uh, have a greater four times greater risk of poverty. They're more likely to have behavioral problems. They have a two times greater risk of infant mortality. They are more likely to go to prison. Children without fathers are more likely to commit crime. And, and girls that grow up without a father are seven times, 700%, more likely to become pregnant as a teen. Children are, that grow up without a father in a fatherless home are more likely to face abuse and neglect, more likely to abuse drugs and alcohol. They're two times more likely to suffer obesity and two times more likely to drop out of school. <clears throat> you know, and I know that it's 2023, and I know where we, where we are. I know that we're in South Sacramento. You know, I can't stand up here and talk about fatherhood and not point out that these, these statistics that we looked at on a national average are probably much higher here in our neighborhood. I know we're here in California. I know that we're in Sacramento and South Sac. And I know that South Sacramento is probably leading these charts and pushing those numbers up. I, married, I am married to my wife, and I'm involved in my children's life. But this is increasingly having a, a being married and having being involved in children's life is increasingly becoming an exception and not the norm. But fathers have been God's tool since the literal beginning of time. Has God's tool that he established stopped working? Has God's tool of fathers and men stopped working? We're going to talk about that. You know, I carry a knife every day, and I carry a multi-tool every day. Every single day. And you know, having the perfect tool when you have a job to do makes your life easier. But sometimes we don't have the perfect tool. Sometimes we have to use the tool that's present. I know this morning we had to break into someone's truck in the parking lot. And I had to use my multi-tool and we used a piece of scrap metal to do it. But a whole lot easier if we had a Slim Jim. But we didn't, and something had to get done. Yesterday, we had a work day, and we used the wrong tools all day. I used the crowbar as a hammer a whole lot. Sometimes you just have to use the tool that's present, the one that's in your pocket. Sometimes we must be the tool that is present. 
And this is where Moses' staff and the story we talked about earlier comes into play. You see, God doesn't just use the perfect tool, the fatherhood that we talked about earlier, but God uses the present tool. God told Moses to speak. And God gave Moses what he needed, but he was still scared. He didn't know what to do. So God used his staff, a simple walking stick, to prove God's greatness. You know, that staff, if you read on longer, it didn't just turn into a snake and back again into a a piece of wood and a walking stick. It it also uh, produced water from a rock. It parted the Red Sea. It did miraculous things because of God working through a tool. And God, we all know that God established perfect tools. He established men as fathers, women as mothers. But sadly, men and women and mothers and fathers aren't always present. Or even if they are, they may not be filling the role that they need to be. Today, you, doesn't matter who you are, is an imperfect tool made for perfect work. It doesn't matter who you are, whether you are a father, whether you're a mother, or just a guy or girl, or even a kid, God has a job for you. God has placed a job in your life to work through people. You have to be the imperfect tool to get God's job done. You know, a present multi-tool is better than a full tool chest that's not present. Doesn't matter if you feel like you're the perfect tool for the job, if you're the perfect person for the job, if you have the skills that you need, it doesn't matter because you're there and you're present, and that's a whole lot more important than being perfect. God established marriage and fatherhood as a perfect model for his love and to advance his kingdom. But sometimes we find this model is broken. It's not by God. It's not broken by God. But by our sin. Our sin breaks down relationships, especially parenthood and marriages. And we saw the numbers. We saw that statistics up on the board here just a while ago. But today, get into the role as a leader over someone's life. That's what we have to do today. One in four. One in four children do not have a man in their life to show them how to be. And, you know, this is deplorable. This is not how it should be. We see numbers like this, and we see this happening every day in our society, everything going around. We see these things. We see the effect of these things. And we still wonder why people are so confused. More likely to be obese, to get pregnant as a teen. More likely to be in poverty. They have behavioral problems, crime, abuse, and more are all increased exponentially. And we wonder why. If you want to change the world, here's your opportunity. This is your opportunity. Your opportunity to step up and be that person and that leader in someone's life. God is giving you that opportunity this morning to step up. Father, absentee fatherism and absentee parenthood is an epidemic. But it doesn't just end with children. Children grow up. Childhood only lasts 18 years. Then the children grow into adults. Too often, broken adults, we have broken adults because they never had someone to speak in their lives. We have to have someone either a man or woman, of God, helping to raise these children and these adults into godly people, sharing them the knowledge, the scripture, God's relationship that we have. We have to share that with people. We see these numbers, but I don't want you to get scared. may seem bleak, but you have to remember what's our scripture for the year. Psalms 112.7, they, God's people, do not fear bad news. They confidently trust the Lord to care for them. 
We don't want to just fear what's going on around us. We want to do something about it. And today, that's what God is calling each and every one of us to do, to be that someone that does something about it. There are entire generations of families that are out, of, that are out in the world that do not know who God is. The world does not look good, but we, need to fe- we don't need to fear the news. God has given us a job to do. Yeah. Be the examples and the parent they need. Yeah. It doesn't matter if they're 6 or 60. They are a child of God and need to know Christ and to be led into a relationship with him. Because ultimately, that relationship with God is the only thing that's going to change that person and, that, and the world. We need God in the world to help us show us right from wrong and who to be and what to do. Apart from God, people do anything they want. And why wouldn't they? If there's no ultimate truth, there's no ultimate end, there's no ultimate plan of God, and if there's no ultimately no God, they're going to do whatever they want. And I don't blame them. But the truth is, there is a God. There is someone who loves them and cares for them and has a plan for them. There's someone that wants them to be the father to their biological children. There's someone that wants to make them do better in this world. My calling is to be a tool in someone else's life. That they may be younger or older than me. They may be different than me. They may look different. It doesn't matter. Families don't just end with biology and marriage. Include others into your family, your Christian family. In the world, being called a tool is not necessarily a good thing. But in God's kingdom, it is. If God can use a stick, he can use you. If God can use a stick, he can use you. No matter how dense you are. I doubt you're as dense as wood. Because it's not the tool that's important. It's the power behind the tool that's important. Be a tool for God. Be God's tool. Doug spoke about being a strong dad and what being a strong dad looks like. Following scripture, being the man of God or the the parent of God that he's called us to be. And we need to be strong dads. We need to be strong men, strong women for our children, our biological and our spiritual ones. We need to be strong examples for God's word and God's relationship. We need to adopt the characteristics that Doug spoke about. Adopt those characteristics that we find in the Bible and we find in the the stories that God shared with us through the Bible. Adopt those characteristics in our lives so that we can turn around and be the man or woman that God needs to affect others. And in that, that's when we're going to see change in the world. This morning, I choose to spoke of a challenge. I want to challenge each and every one of you. The altars are open, if you'd like, to come forward. But the altars are open. um, And people, if you do, people will be ready to pray with you. But this week, I challenge you to be on the lookout for someone to mentor, either to mentor you or for you to mentor. That there's someone there that would help you if you're here this morning and you're not the man or woman of God that you need to be. And I think we all have work that we need to do. I would challenge you to look out for that person, to look for a person that can help to make you grow. But I also think that we should be looking, and I challenge you this morning, to look for somebody either in your community where you live, out in the church, a neighbor, it doesn't matter. Look for someone that you can help share the gospel with. 
that you can share God's will with and plan with. That is your challenge for this week. And I'm going to close out in prayer in a little bit. And if there's people up here, I'd ask you to just, you know, pay, you know, not be too loud or anything like that. But on the way out in the back, we have gifts for everybody. We have some tool sets (laughs) for all of the guys that go along with our message. But please take this challenge seriously. Because it's not me that's saying it. I believe this is from God. I don't think God likes those numbers that we're seeing this morning. I know he doesn't because he didn't set it up that way. God wants to see a difference. And I know this is a small church in the middle of South Sacramento. But I think that God wants that change to come from here. And God wants that change to come from the people here in South Sacramento. I don't believe that fatherhood, I don't believe that leadership and leading people to Christ is any joke, but we all know that people kind of take it that way sometimes. So with that being said, I'm going to, we're going to bow our heads and pray to close out. And at the end, if you'd like to come up and pray, that's great. If not, you're feel free to be excused. God, we come before you right now and I thank you so much for the example that you've given us through leadership with fathers and mothers, God. And I want to thank you so much for all of the men and women that you've placed in my life and that you've placed in the lives of our members and the people here this morning that are listening to our message. God, they gave us great examples. God, I pray for those people who didn't have the great examples that are hearing this today, God, that you'd be help them to heal, that you'd help them to be able to look past those hurts and those problems that we know come up with these kind of days. God, I pray that each and every person here today would have a saving faith in you that would know that, God, you come first and foremost, and that, God, you are the ultimate example of what fatherhood should be. God, I pray this morning that you would put on each and every person here's heart, God, people that are above them, that will help them to lead them to a closer relationship with you. doesn't matter where they are, God. We all need leaders to help us grow. And God, I pray that you would place people on our hearts and that you place people in our paths, God, that need to hear your message, that would need to be mentored by us, God, so that we can help them grow, that we can help your kingdom grow and we can help this church grow, that we can help them to have that relationship with you. Because God, that's the model that you want us to follow. God, I pray special blessing for everyone here this morning and I ask for a special blessing on all of the fathers and God we just love you so much and ask these things in your name Amen